Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone, to the first of our product launch session. And this product launch session will be focused on automation in AIP and Foundry. Uh, to kick things off, just want to do very brief introductions uh, to introduce myself. I'm Matt Hawes. Uh, I started off working at Pounty about seven and a half years ago in our commercial space, starting some of our business out in South Korea in the Middle East, uh, and have since moved into product where I lead some of our AIP engineering teams. I'll let Austin introduce himself. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Austin. I started at Palantir just over eight years ago. Also started in our commercial business over in Europe. Uh, and ha since around 2020, I've been working in the product organization, leading all the work on connectivity and data connection. Nice. So what are we going to cover today? Well, uh, I'll do a very brief introduction um, of kind of the workflow that we're going to use to demonstrate some of these features. And then Austin will be leading us through a demonstration. And we'll call out as we're going, rather than giving you a bunch of slides on what new products, we're instead just going to put them into context in a workflow and then call them out as we show new products. We'll then do a bit of a recapitulation to kind of show what we've, uh, we've seen. And then not to steal Ed's thunder, but the next session, we'll see a lot of this stuff in production. Um, so let's uh, kick things off. Uh, by, sorry, can we slide back one? In fact, switch to the laptop would be great. Awesome. So we're going to take on the role of a supply chain manager at a manufacturing company. So what I want to be doing in my day to day is I want to be improving the efficiency of my supply chain. I want to be brokering new deals with suppliers and so on. What I actually end up doing is responding to a lot of emails, specifically a lot of emails from customers. You can actually see my inbox right here. Um, my inbox contains various different questions of, can I cancel my orders? What's an update on my various orders? All of this kind of stuff. And this is not my core competency. And so what I instead want to be doing is I want to be doing my real job. And the goal of this automation is going to be, can we automate responses to these emails? So you'll see I've just sent one. This, if you ask me, perhaps you could open it up. What is the, and maybe zoom in, it says, what is the current status of my orders? So how are we going to come up with an answer to this question? Well, we're going to use a bunch of different products in AIP to try and automate the response. Uh, and I'm going to hand over to Austin, kind of talk a little bit about that. And yeah. you can also see the drafts that have been previously. So you can probably imagine we've practiced this a few times. So you can see the drafts that have previously arrived. Um, and in the time that we're talking, what's going on in the background is AIP. We've actually already set this up. So we want to show you the result of this. And that's actually just come up on the screen now. And I, I don't want to like under, I, I don't want to undersell this, right? It seems like kind of magic what's happened here. But a draft has been popped into my inbox. And this draft is fed with the information from my ontology that answers the question about the orders. So you can see, and perhaps Austin, I don't know if people can see this, but if you zoom in slightly there. Yeah. Um, this is not some platitude-filled response from ChatGPT online, right? This is a contentful response, right? It contains my orders, contains the order dates, the details, the status, et cetera. And so that's the thing I really want to emphasize here. And we're going to spend the rest of the demonstration talking about how we achieve this. And I'll hand over to Austin to start walking us through that. Yeah. Uh, so let me jump over. I'm going to just show a, a solution diagram and zoom into this. So I'm not going to talk through the whole diagram right from the start, but I'll start off over on the left. And I think the first step when thinking about how to automate this kind of workflow is, first of all, how are you going to give AIP access to the emails? Obviously, you know, if you were thinking about you know, having a new employee or an intern or someone working on this inbox and trying to answer uh, emails, you need to give them their email account. You need to give them access to the data. And so this actually brings me to the, the sort of first cool new product thing that I wanted to announce, which is support in data connection for event listeners. And the idea here is that for something like Gmail, you can actually pretty easily stream data using PubSub uh, from an email inbox to another platform. And historically, that wasn't something that you could just point at Foundry and start pushing data there. And that's something that we, we now support. And so I'll just show you really quickly the, the listener that I have set up for the, the inbound emails. And part of the reason why I wanted to use a listener for this uh, is because I want the emails to come in really quickly. And I want to be able to push that to a stream. And so what we have here is a listener that I've provisioned, gives me an endpoint where I can, uh, I can plug that into the Google Cloud Console and have PubSubs pub sub start pushing data there. I've activated it. We can see our inbound messages coming in. And just to show you really quickly, this is the, the Cloud Console where I've set this up. It's actually super simple. Just copy the URL over here uh, and, and hit Save. Uh, and the data is flowing. So for something like this, where I want the drafts to show up as quickly as possible. Uh, something like event listeners is really handy for that. Uh, I'll also just show really quickly some of the other kinds of listeners that we have. 
in case people are interested in using them. So uh, we just come over here. This is available, by the way, on the environment that you're going to be using for the, the hacking over the next couple of days. So these are the ones that we support today. Uh, we're actually really excited as well to uh, support custom listeners in the near future. It's not quite ready yet, uh, but this covers a huge amount of surface area for the kinds of automations and integrations that, that people are interested in doing. So if, if you see anything on here uh, that sort of sparks your interest for your build sessions later, then definitely, if you're, if you're having trouble setting it up, come find one of us and we can help. All right, so we've given AIP access to the data. Now we need to tell it how to actually craft a reasonable email response. And what we're using for that uh, is something called AIP logic. I'm doing a little bit of pipelining here just because the, the data that comes in from Google doesn't have the actual email content, so I need to enrich and call some of their APIs. I'm not going to go into detail on that. You can read the docs uh, from, from Google if you need. Uh, but the, the main business thing here is this logic function. And the logic function is going to be combining a bunch of stuff. We're going to talk about all these different things that are happening around it. But before we do that, I just want to maybe Matt can introduce logic for people who haven't seen it, and then we can talk through what this logic function is actually doing to produce a reasonable email response. Sure. Yeah. And if people haven't seen Logic, you can think of Logic as like a low, no code function builder for interacting with LLMs. Uh, and I'm going to kind of walk you through this function that you're seeing on the screen now. So the very first thing, and maybe like zoom in one level just so people yeah, can yeah. see it a little bit better. Um, the very first thing is the inbound email, right? This email has arrived. Uh, First thing we're going to do is we're going to call an LLM to try and figure out what is the relevant customer for this particular email. Right? We can do this a few different ways. It might be easy. Right? The email might be on our system. Maybe they're sending it from a different email. We can look up their name, et cetera. So we're using an LLM enriched with tools to find out the relevant customer. And once we've got that, we can then start to leverage the full depth and breadth of our ontology to traverse all of those links and pull in a bunch of extra information. And that's what these uh, subsequent blocks are doing. They're pulling that information in, formatting it for an LLM. And as we go down right to the very bottom, we can actually start to write our email. So if you expand out that one, you can see the prompt's pretty simple here. Write a draft response to the email and just let the LLM do the work based on the contextual information that has been retrieved from the ontology. Cool. Let's see that running, actually, Austin. Perhaps we can run an example. Maybe we can even run the example uh, that we received. What was the email that you just sent? <laughs> can I get an order update? Uh, yeah, this one. Nice. So what you're seeing here is you're seeing the debugger. And this is the back and forth between the LLM and its tools showing all of the different tokens coming back. And this is really sort of a, a developer tool, both for in development and also in production, because we capture full logs from everything that's happened. So if something goes wrong, it responds badly to an email, you can figure out what were the prompts, what, what went wrong, and, and how should we improve it. And the, yeah, the Austin's showing the previous run. So this is the one, 9.23 AM, the one that ran on the, the email. This is a pretty good start, right? OK, we've pulled data into Foundry using event listeners. Uh, we've come up with a way of crafting a pretty sensible response. Is it time to bring it into production? Almost, right? Uh, but we've only run one example through this. And a great thing to do next is to try and think about how can we test this? How can we use evals to make sure that we have confidence in the function? And I think to extend the analogy here, I think of evals as a way of like proofreading what the LLM is producing. Right? Like, I want to have confidence that my new employee is answering the emails in a way that I'm happy with, that it you know, represents my business externally in the way that I want. And I think in this case, what I really want to do with this function, you know, I, I can test it manually against a few different inputs. I'm confident that it's producing reasonable responses. But I want to extend that confidence across a broader range of emails that are going to come in and that this thing needs to produce responses to. So yeah. can Austin, you pull that one up. And I can give kind of uh, a very brief overview of evals. So this is probably a it's pretty overloaded term uh, by this point uh, within AI, out, even outside of Palantir. Um, but you can think of evals as essentially a testing framework for your LLM functions, as Austin was saying, to sort of proofread their responses. And we've got that showing on the screen here right now. And you can see each line of this is a, is a test case. Um, and each column is a different parameter of that test case. So the first one is obviously the inbound email. The next one over is the expected most relevant order. And I'm, I'm particularly keen on this, because this is not the final response from the LLM. right? It's, it's what is uh, 
what does the LLM think is the expected order before it even writes the email? So this is allowing us to check intermediate stages of our LLM function. Because if it's not even got the right order or the right customer, there's no chance that it's going to write the correct email. So we're kind of checking every step of the process. And then finally, we have a key detail column, um, which is sort of a summarization of, of what the email should contain. And that is being, uh, you, we're using that together with an LLM as judge to kind of compare, uh, is the email, does the email contain that content? Uh, and this is where this the evals gets kind of different to say traditional unit tests, because we're using LLM functions. So the output's going to be non-deterministic if we just do an exact string match. Again, this, speaking to a crowd of developers, you guys are probably very familiar with what I'm talking about here. Um, we need to try and find other ways of evaluating the response. And what Austin's showing right now is actually another logic function used for evaluating the output. You can see in the prompt here, uh, it determined if the key detail is mentioned within the provided email. So this is, this is checking to see uh, whether the response um, is accurate or not. You should also... Uh, Later on, we're doing the Canary uh, sessions. The Canary sessions will actually focus on this logic function you're seeing now. So if you want to learn how to build evals on top of this kind of stuff, we'll be using this example. And Colton will be walking us through how to do that. Awesome. And now that we've got confidence in our LLM function, we can start to think about automating it. Right? We can start to br think about bringing this into production. And I've, I've kind of led uh, into what we're going to be using for that, AIP Automate. Uh, and Austin's going to walk us through how we can use Automate. And while he's pulling it up, you can think of Automate as a way of uh, making your ontology more dynamic, living and breathing. As I think a quote I stole from Ed from at and um, It's allowing you to monitor changes to your ontology. So for example, when a condition is triggered, so this could be a time-based condition and edit your ontology, you can trigger various different effects, including that logic function. So Austin, if you'd like to walk us through how we can do that. Yeah, and I think you know, automation is a big theme of DevCon. And you know, it wouldn't make sense uh, for us to do a product launch presentation without talking about some new features in Automate. And I think for folks who have uh, used it before, you'll be familiar with what's possible. I'll just very quickly talk through what's happening here. So as Matt mentioned, automations uh, have a condition when you want them to trigger and uh, something that you want to happen off the back of that automation. And so in this case, it's a very simple, straightforward automation. We're just checking whenever there are new changes to our inbound emails and then triggering the logic function that writes and puts the draft response back into our Gmail inbox. And so this is the, the logic function we were just looking at. Uh, and one of the things to point out here and the, the sort of new product feature side of this uh, is the announcement of streaming support in automations. So one of the things that uh, helped make this as fast as it was to see the draft show back up in Gmail is the fact that this automation is running continuously and our inbound email ontology object is backed by a stream. And so you're now able to set up conditions on streaming object types. Uh, we're not showing this here, but it's actually also possible to set up conditions directly on streams. And one of the reasons for doing that, let's say, for example, you don't want to deal with uh, streaming compute and you don't need to transform the data at all. I actually, in preparation for this, was building an example with uh, Jira automation. And with Jira, uh, the payload from the inbound event actually contains all the information that you need. So you can actually write an automation and run a logic function directly on the raw data coming in without having to do any pipelining. So uh, we're really excited for people to use this. Again, this is something that you can use over the next couple of days. Uh, as you're building out your uh, your projects, and uh, definitely come talk to us if you have uh, comments or feedback about new features in automation. Uh, one other thing to point out about these automations, again, for people who haven't used it before, you have this visibility uh, into what the automation is doing over time. And that sort of observability aspect is another thing that you need in order to have confidence deploying these end-to-end -end automation workflows into production. So not only are we checking that the logic function is performing the way that we want, but we're also keeping track of how the end-to-end -end automation flow is being triggered and what's happening with that. And we can actually see exactly which object triggered this automation, passed into the function. We can, as we showed before, go into logic and, and take a look at exactly what was going on there. And I think that's actually a really good segue to sort of what I see as the final stage of this workflow, which is that we've, we've built it, right? And we've now put it into production using uh, Automate. But this doesn't, this, we, we still want to close the loop. And what I mean by closing the loop is we've popped a draft into Austin's inbox. 
this draft is not quite right, right? I don't know if you saw what Austin just deleted there, but there was some sort of internal details that wasn't quite right, didn't really match with the response. So we're going to want to delete that before we send it. Maybe okay. I don't want to invite them to reach out about additional information. Yeah, maybe, maybe we don't want to invite any more questions. So let's yeah. just like, let's say we're done now. So we can send that. Um, and I, I, I'm sure we're all developers here. I'm sure you're uh, familiar with how difficult it is to get feedback from your users. They're busy, right? They don't want to be telling you, they don't want to be clicking the thumbs up, thumbs down button within uh, the, your application. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I think one thing that's really interesting is how can you capture feedback? How can you capture evals from your production workflow? And I think that you can do that in a way that's very implicit. And you'll see that again um, with, with Ed in the next session. But what we're doing here is we're able to take the draft that the user had, sorry, that the LLM generated, take the response that we actually sent, diff those, and use that to say, OK, well, what was wrong here? Let's use that as an evaluation going forward. And that creates a feedback loop that allows you to improve the quality of your LLM applications over time. And Austin has very simple uh, sort of uh, differ and, and, and workshop pipeline set up. Perhaps you can walk through that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we didn't talk about this before, but one of the other things that this logic function is doing is writing back to the ontology the propo proposed draft email uh, that we're going to send and that we put back into Gmail. And so I think the, the really cool thing about this workflow is that from the perspective of someone who's used to responding to emails in this inbox, A, it makes their life immediately easier. They can keep doing their job the same way they were doing it before. If they need to look up some information, double check something, they can still do that. Uh, because you know, initially, when rolling this out, maybe we don't have the confidence to have the LLM you know, automatically send the email. So we're putting these drafts. We capture the drafts. We capture the sent emails. And uh, I'm just going to quickly pull up the, the draft identifier for the. So Austin's just going to show us an example yeah. um, of how so we can was... compare these various different things. So this is just a simple identifier for that draft. Yeah. And we built a very, very simple workshop app that allows you to compare these. Now, in reality, what you would do is you would have those potentially feedback directly into your evals, um, figure out whether you can uh, review each one and sort of say, well, OK, is this a good candidate to use as a test case? Yeah, exactly. So this is the draft email that we produced. You can see we deleted a couple of sections when we actually sent it. We see that over on the right. And we didn't fully build this out quite yet, but the workflow that you would want here is some way of taking this sort of natural exhaust of people continually doing their workflow and feed that back into the overall system such that you're you know, maybe eventually confident enough for a certain class of emails to just send them automatically. Okay. Uh, yeah. Cool. Awesome. And with that, can we switch back to the slides? Because I'd like to sort of recapitulate what we've achieved here. So first, we used eventlessness to connect Foundry and AIP to our email inbox. Then we set up an automation that can monitor that stream in real time to trigger a logic function that authors that email using the depth and breadth of my ontology to create a response. I then used evals to make sure that the response was accurate and suitable to send to a customer. And finally, I encoded a feedback loop to make sure that my product is getting better over time as more and more emails get sent. 